Hello everyone, welcome back to another, surprisingly, another interview with a WandaVision actor and Westview resident. Can't believe it myself. I'm not going to take up too much of your time, I just want to quickly say a huge thank you to everyone that supported me, followed me, commented on these videos, etc. And basically just given me the opportunity to even talk to the actors in the first place, because this is still, even though I've spoke to four of them, this is still crazy for me. I'm not going to take up too much of your time, like I said, I'm just going to let you get straight into it. Here we go, enjoy. So, hello everyone, I'm back with a, another video and another interview today, and uh, I'm sure you're all as sad as me that WandaVision is over, but uh, fortunately, we can still talk about it, the, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier isn't here yet, and uh, I'm lucky enough, again, somehow, to be joined by another WandaVision actor. Uh, I want to introduce my guest, I'm joined by WandaVision actor and Westview resident, Jolene Purdy. Do you want to say hello? Hi everyone, this is Jolene, I play Beverly, aka Isabel Matsueta. Perfect. Um, okay, yeah, we're just going to jump into some questions straight away here. Do you want to run us through how you auditioned, like what the audition process was like and how you got the role in WandaVision? Oh my goodness. So we had to sign NDAs even to have like fake scripts to audition with. So I got these like pages with a couple lines and I looked at it and I was like, ah, whatever. And I went in and I said my lines and they were like, that was great. And I was like, oh, I feel, I, are you sure? Okay. And a month later, like when you're an actor and you're going on these auditions constantly, you kind of like leave it and go to the next. And so a month went by before I even heard back from it. Um, and I still didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was until like right before starting to film it. So I, I literally was in the dark. That is, that's crazy. So you didn't even know really what you were auditioning for at all? No idea. I know, I knew it was like something Marvel-ish, but not what. So, uh, so you are fake script to, to do your audition with, is that right? Yeah. What, what was the script about? Are you allowed to tell us that? It was similar, like, um, I think about the chairs, but like the names were different and like, it wasn't, there wasn't like everything. It was just like kind of random, okay, but like okay. in the vein. Um, I just want to say as well, I'm, I'm going to be looking between here and here. It's because I've got like a monitor and like I've got two monitors. So I'm, You're juggling a lot of things. Yeah, it, it, I've got like a, I'm looking at two different screens here. I'm not being rude and looking away from you. I'm, I've got two okay. things here. Um, so... Yeah, so you knew you were auditioning for a Marvel project. Uh, are you a fan of Marvel or have you been a fan, fan of Marvel before WandaVision? Okay, so I've seen a couple Marvel things. Okay. But I would not call myself a fan. Okay. I feel like in my head, I was like, oh, these are boy movies where it's just like shooting and like, I don't get it. And so I like, I'd watched Iron Man and I was like, oh, this is, this is, this is pretty good. But again, it was like action packed. And I was just of like, course. oh. I want like the fluffy feel good things too. Um, I love comedies, but when I booked this, I was like, okay guys, what do I watch? What's going to lead me into oh, God. what's going on? You have to watch a lot. Well, it was like one week before shooting that I was like, okay, look, I, I have a four-year-old, well, three-year-old and I don't have a lot of time. So they like gave me um, the Civil Wars and the one before, what what came before it? Another one. Age of Ultron. I don't remember. Uh, no, I, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. It was okay, an Avengers okay. one. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it will be an Age of, that's like the one that Scarlet, that WandaVision mainly tied yeah. to is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're like, watch these two, you'll at that, least know who. That, yeah, that's kind of all you need to watch to understand Wanda. And right, right. So I did that, but then I actually really liked it. Like they were funny. Yeah, they're so addictive. There's so much heart in it. So I've now started taking the journey to watch. How, how, how far are you along in your journey? Not far. <laughs> I know. Well, especially if you're, if you're um, as busy as you are, there, there's a lot, there's a lot to catch up on. Yeah. And there's so much TV, like, so as an actor, you want to watch other genres of shows and things you're auditioning for to get tonally what you're looking for. So I feel like I'm constantly watching TV and like, that's a tough problem to have, but um, it is work related. So it oh, gets, of course, yeah. it's hard to watch what I want to watch instead of watching what I should be watching. I not obviously not on the same scale as being an actual actor who is in these things, but making like social media stuff around movies and TV shows. And there's a lot of stuff that I have to keep on top of. Well, and sometimes I'm like, I really don't want to watch this, but like 
I have to watch this because I'll be asked about it and I'll have to give my opinion and I feel like I have to be up to date on everything all the time. Exactly. When really I just want to be watching The Bachelor, you know? Like. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, like there's some stuff that I, I really, n- nothing Marvel, everything Marvel, I'm, I'm there like the second it opens. Um, but there's some other stuff, like if it's like a, a relevant movie or, or TV show that everyone's talking about and I'm like, God, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to sit and watch this because I know I'll be asked about it. It's kind of but sometimes I'm like, oh God. But um <laughs> yeah, I feel that. And I, I say to people, I'm like, oh no, I, I can't do this, I have to watch this. And they're like, Oh, you're complaining that you have to like, the same as what you said, like like exactly. like I kind of yeah. Um yeah. so so you've not been into Marvel long, uh, but you are enjoying it, yeah. So much. And I've got to say the fans are definitely teaching me some things. So I pop into like some of these like fan rooms just to hear the chatter and like what's going on. And, and I really depend on you guys to explain everything to me. Oh, that's, that's what, that's what, that's what I'm all about. That's what I'm all about. I appreciate it. Um, The Easter eggs. I can't get over it. I'm like, really? Every every single week I do, I do my Easter egg breakdowns and I watch the episode. So I watch it for my, in my time. Uh, UK it comes out at eight o'clock in the morning so uh, I'll get up early to watch it I record my reaction and then I, after I've done that I literally I watch it three or four times um even sometimes like slowed down to try and like put like find every like numbers things in the background like connotations themes all that sort of stuff like oh. and, and it's not just me there are, there are thousands of people who do this like it's it's a massive community of people who who are so into this it's, it's, it blows me away as well Everyone seems so respectful of each other. Like I've yes. seen people tear people down, but I feel like in the Marvel world of fans, like everyone's super just excited and supportive. Yeah. I, I think that's probably to do with two things. It's like, there's always new stuff coming out. So mm-hmm. for as a from a fan point of view, it's like the best studio to, to be a fan of. There's always something to look forward to. Um, but also like Marvel itself is really like progressive and you know uh, inclusion uh you know you know like uh like uh female female roles people of color all that kind of stuff like they're they're one of the best in the world at the moment for trying to include every type of group they possibly can so i feel like that from a fan point of view will bring in more people you know because they feel more included yeah 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 uh so obviously um on on one division uh we know that especially after the the documentary that came out that uh, it was filmed in front of a live audience or the first uh, episode or two was i believe uh, did you have to did you have to act in front of a live audience i didn't i didn't but i'm so bummed because multi cameras with live audiences are like my dream i love them so much um so i'm super jealous but so proud of the actors that that did it so uh, my next question was going to be, if, if you weren't, would you have wanted to be in front of a live camera? Because I know for some people. I come from theater. So it's like, for me, a multi-camera in front of a live audience is the best of both worlds. Yeah. You know, you get a bigger so you, paycheck, but you get to be in front of people and get the instant gratification <laughs> too. That's what David said as well. That's exactly what David said, that he came from a theater background and it's the instant validation without sounding self-absorbed. I'm, I, I know it's not like that. But like you instant, you know you've done a good job straight away sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, imagine how hard it is. Like, imagine like I'm gonna do a sports thing, but like you hit a home run, no one claps. Oh yeah, oh no, you that would suck. Like, and then you just have to run around the bases and then get up and do it again, knowing no one's gonna clap. It's like that's like the difference, I guess, from having an audience. So I guess the NBA or I don't know, I guess all the sports teams now that can't have audiences because of pandemic understand what it's like. Yeah, but then. The, it could it not go the other way like what what if the live audience was there and they didn't laugh would that not is that not so much pressure without like oh, i i can't imagine that i did a multi-camera uh a season of a show with nisi nash jerry o'connell jesse tyler ferguson dave franco um i think okay. we got seven episodes and there were a couple times when there were no laughs um and my character always got laughs because they always wrote me like the weirdest things to say what show was it i didn't have to act at all it just kind of everything that spewed out was funny um it was called do not disturb for fox um it was my first ever audition for a series regular on a pilot and it went for a hot second um but yeah it is a little egg on face if there's no reaction to 
what you yeah. say. But it's, it's worth worth the risk for the payoff then. Absolutely. And guess what? You get to try again because it's still TV. So you get to do it again. Um, try something new. Okay. I, I could never. That That's like, I, I get so nervous doing anything. I, I could never do something like that. I, I hats off to actors in general, but especially people watching you. That's I'm fine with a camera. That, that's enough for me. Oh, but if I get like people I know, like three or four people that I know, I'm terrible. Like I'm like a bit, blah, 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 blah. like I just can't function. <laughs> but if it's a bunch of people I don't know, I'm like, eh, I don't care. Fine. That's fair enough. That's that's that you you radiate confidence. It's not definitely. A def, def, definitely. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. Make it till you make it. Okay, so um, obviously, one division is. As much as you watch the the other Marvel things, it's nothing like Marvel's ever done. It's completely completely new. What was it like adapting to the different decades, the different time periods for each each episode? As an actor, you know, getting into a different mindset and wardrobe, etc. Oh, for me, wardrobe is huge. It sets the tone of how you feel. The shoes that you're standing in, you know how your character is is walking, talking, feeling. It it kind of just puts on a whole new. Um, persona for for you just heels and a dress and big hair and um I love the 50s 60s so that was super fun for me um and I loved that I got to play like an older I don't know I guess she was maybe in her 30s mom kind of situation character one of the uh, Stepford with, like a Stepford wife type yes and the yeah. pool scene the pool scene radiates Stepford wife Oh, for sure. Do you know how hot it was that day shooting that? I have no idea. It was 110 degrees and there was black and white lighting. It was 118. They took a temperature thing of where the, we were The shooting. black and white lighting, that's, they're like really, really hot lights, aren't they? Like lava, like oh fire. My God. Yeah. And then and we have- makeup, this- makeup as well, yeah. Makeup. Some people had wigs like undergarments, everything is like authentic material. So it's like, whoa. Oh, my, it's oh just like, no, no, no. Yeah. So they were, they were troopers. All of us where, women sitting out there. Where was that? Where was the scene filmed? Is that in LA? It was in LA. Yeah. 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 Uh, On the oh. actual sound um, uh, exteriors um, that I dream of Jeannie and Bewitched. Those are the same exact houses. Um, I noticed, I noticed the, the house. Yeah. The exact house from Bewitched was used for Agatha's house. Is that right? Isn't that cool? That's really cool. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. I saw that. Um, and our director, Matt Shackman, I don't know if he, he did an interview where he talked about it, but he actually grew up as a child actor in that same lot. I, so he was telling us stories of when the, he was the attention. Kid. Sorry to cut you off. The attention to detail is, is like unbelievable. Yeah. It's crazy. Everything. Yeah. Um, so can, can I relate into that? What, what was like anything on set or behind the scenes that, that surprised you or shocked you the most? on WandaVision? Was there anything that like really threw you off? So some pictures came out, paparazzi like found our set and well, they started always thinking, do. Uh, I, uh, I had no idea, like I shot orange and I guess we had some, but it was mostly like when we were outside of the lot, but they came like real close and got pictures of us. And so that was to me surprising. Um, like, I think I was carrying, like, my lunch, and they had pictures of me, like, in my horse thing, and I was like, this is terrible. Like, at least get me in something cute, not the horse pants. Oh, yeah. Um, the one the one scene where you're not wearing a nice dress and nice hair get yeah. up. And I think the other thing that was so cool is it seems like, um, it sounds terrible, the more famous actors that I work with tend to be the most grounded and easiest to work with. Really? They, like literally it was just like kicking back, hanging out, doing our job. They were so professional, so pro- supportive off camera. And Matt Shackman, let me just say, he deserves that DGA award because for how expensive this show was in the like height of pandemic with them telling like the date that the, sh- the, the show was supposed to come out, he was like, chill cool as a cucumber just like sure you want another take yeah like really made me feel confident and secure in um making choices and that's the most amazing thing to have in a director that that must like really help i suppose like you know i'm i'm obviously you know disney and, and marvel especially are so meticulous with everything they do 
but then on from like you think they would be or I would anyway from a fan point of view think that they would be like on set like super strict and you know but to hear the complete opposite that that's awesome that's really cool well there would be like a time where he'd go that was great that was great but can you do it this way (laughs) so he he had the vision and he guided us straight to it so so um Going going off uh, what you said there, uh, who who was the most fun or most enjoyable to work with on set? Oh my god! If you can choose, uh, everyone was so different. Um, Lizzie is like, uh, it was a masterclass watching her work. Just like her on the other side of the camera, like say it's my coverage, and she's like really close to the camera to give us eye line after shooting all of her epic stuff, she still has the energy to be present for other actors as like the star of this thing. And she's moving with the camera, asking what's their choreography for, so that she doesn't get in their way, but can still be present with us. That was- That's amazing. It really made me want to step up my game for my other actors too, when I work. Um, And then Paul is just hilarious. Um, He is my favorite person. In the, at the moment in the whole world i love I, him so much I, I second that i feel yeah. like he should definitely be everyone's favorite person he, he definitely should be especially watching the documentary the behind the scenes he, he just seems like the coolest guy he's so suave but also so, awkward i love him so much so cool and so humble and hilarious and just incredible i don't know and Catherine was hilarious and so positive like just the positivity and care that she brought to set making sure crew members were okay in the heat no one checks on the crew she made sure to check in and get water for the crew like you don't it's just it's very it's it's very rare um and Asif was hilarious we had shenanigans um and David saying what the three of us were like the three amigos running around um being COVID safe but running around um yeah I've, I've 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 um been lucky enough to talk to them too and they're they're lovely as well like everyone i've spoke to from one division is is you know they've only had positive things to say about it so it, ma- it makes it even better like it's it's never nice when you're a fan of something and then you hear that there's a lot of problems behind the scenes and people weren't really but if you hear it's like genuinely like as fun as it is for us to watch for people to be a part of it it's, it's so nice for us to hear from from the other side you know Oh, good. It, yeah, it, really, it really is. It was probably one of the most positive experiences overall that I've had. Yeah, you, you can you can connect more to characters if you know that they're connected to each other, you know what I mean? And you can you can get in, in, invested more. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how long, how long for your scenes did it take to film? Like how long were you working on the project or on set? Sorry, roughly, I, I, not the exact day or anything, but... Um, so I'm used to the TV world. I love TV. It's quick. You know, you know, your character, you get to grow. There's some improv. There's some things that you get to do. I love TV. This was more like a film. So it was a little bit slower paced than I'm used to. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know that it took us, uh, like an entire day to shoot, um, the exteriors when we're coming out with the like little cookies and stuff and you've got um uh Catherine and Lizzie walking with the bunny um over that took like a whole day and the pool scene took an entire day and then some um and the epic townspeople finale situation took like a week plus like a week the talent show took like a week um yeah, just ballparking, well, but it, yeah, yeah, even then, it t- like it takes so much longer than 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 I would think. That's and that's. Then they had to edit, and then they had to, you know. So just it's all hands on deck, moving as fast as we can, and yeah. So you 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 yourself were in the center of the the final episode. Did 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 you actually know the ending of the show? Did you know the story of the show? No. I mean, I had a, I had an idea just based off of what we shot. I was like, okay. And then when we had to like drop and then she like opened the hex. Right. So I was like, okay, so it's opening and we're running. So chances are this hex situation is done. So, so that's like what I made up in my head. So you you were just filling in the blanks then really. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. But see, I only shot the beginning and then that. So the entire middle, I was like, lost. oh, yeah, no idea. I think it's that's one of my favorite things. I, I think it's so cool about how secretive and how well kept everything is from from everyone. And, you know, it's it's, just, it's, it's crazy. The best was like I walked on set the first day and I was like, do you guys know what we're doing? They were like, no, it's like, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> We'll, we'll do this we got we're both we'll, we'll get this you could have been signed up for anything you didn't know you're just there nope. you're just there to take part i just showed up they put a pretty dress and pretty hair and makeup on and i had to say some things that's all you need that's all you need yeah um so i i assume that you watched the show like you kept up to date with the show yeah 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 so you you liked it yeah yeah okay me me too obviously loved it um I no idea how it was going to piece together week by week and i had no idea about agatha all along i mean that was the I, next question i knew i knew there was something especially after shooting the the finale kind of thing but yeah. i didn't know there was going to be a whole song the song um, is the song went uh, in the first day that the song was released on itunes it went to number one no way yeah the first day Agatha all along top the charts. I mean, it makes sense. I, I I have it on repeat every day. I have it on repeat up here every day. Um, me too. I have it like <laughs> mentally and physically on repeat every day. It's, it's, it's a banger. Yep, yep. Yeah. Did you have, while you were watching the show, did you have like any theories yourself on what was going to happen? Is there any like wild theories that, or things that you thought were going to happen that either came true or never? I personally, like, because I don't know Marvel that well, couldn't, like, come up with anything, but I would pop in on these Marvel rooms, and they would have these theories that are like, oh, they're the witches, and I was like, I don't know what that means, but I was like, oh, I could totally see that happening, um, especially with um, Agatha's history, and I'm like, oh, okay, that totally makes parallel sense, but then people started being like, you're Mephisto, and I'm like, I had to call my friend, and I'm like, who's Mephisto? Demo, demo. What is this Mephisto situation? And so, like, I honestly just respond with a little devil emoji to anyone that that writes it because I had no idea. What it's like the, the biggest the biggest joke in the Marvel community at the moment is everyone is Mephisto, the Marvel yeah. devil. It was the most every single week there was new theories on who Mephisto was, and it was never. There's, and there's then no one that's Beverly though. It there was there was um it, I I see with theories it could have been the rabbit it could have been. Asif, it could have been like yourself, uh, like literally everyone. There was a case, the stork in, in episode three or oh, four. Stork. Yeah, the red smoke. I could that. There was something weird about that stork. I think, um, I don't know about the stork, but the, the red smoke was there to represent the Wizard of Oz. You know, like the, mag the magic witch who puffs into red smoke. There's a oh, lot of Wizard no. of Oz. There's, there's a lot of Wizard of Oz connotations in, in, the, in the show. That must be why I love it because the Wizard of Oz is like, my favorite movie so yeah in the in the two scenes where you see a theater in the background the great and powerful oz is the poster and uh sam raimi directed that and he's uh, working with elizabeth in multiverse and madness oh okay um and then in the finale as well there was the like the shoes trapped under the car in the house right. which is right. yeah there's, there's a lot of different little ones um like but if there you was and, no one in the shoes. That's when I saw that I was like, "Oh, it's like the Wizard of Oz," but then no one was there. And yeah, I was but, like, mm. but 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 the witch isn't dead. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. That, that. So wait, what is the last movie in the finale? What is it? The something Tenen Tenenbaums or whatever? Like it's. I think it's made up. The the one that was on the board. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but I'm. It's not a real movie. I'm pretty okay. sure. Okay. I, I, I did. I, I googled it. I, I did too because I was I was on set with my phone and I was like I bet this means something I couldn't find anything yeah um, I, I, if it means something I'm I'm clueless I, I don't know what it means um in like five more Marvel things you'll realize what it meant oh yeah I'll, I'll find out in 2027 and it'll all make sense it's, it's yep. worth it it's worth it to per persevere yep yep um <laughs> so do you take do you stay in touch with anyone from the show are you friend did you you know are you friends with anyone outside of one division so David and I text almost daily, um, just random stupid things. I've, I've seen your funny videos together. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he's hilarious and very very kind and sweet and positive. And you need to find 
people like that, you know, um, you know, message back and forth with Asif. Like we were just the three buddies that hung out mostly. Um, yeah, but that's, that's about it. It's a good group. Yeah. Yeah. So um, outside of WandaVision completely, but what's been your favorite project that you've worked on? Because I know you, you've worked on a lot of stuff that I'm a fan of, like Donnie Darko, uh, Breaking Bad, um, Under the Dome. I watched all of Under the Dome. You did? Even yes. like the second and third season? Me and my mum watched it, yes. As soon as we start something, we, we, can't, we can't finish. Um, I, I didn't watch Orange is the New Black, but um, I have a lot of family members who watched it. And they're, they're big fans of it. And they were excited when um, I told them I was talking to you. So what was your favorite to work on? Oh, man. Um, I feel like I have to say Donnie Darko because it was my first thing ever. And Drew Barrymore, Jake Gyllenhaal, Patrick Swayze, Mary McDonald, Noah Wiley. Like, I mean, it, just the, the, yeah. it, it, it was incredible. And it was shot so quickly. And it was like the baby of Richard Kelly. Um, he wrote and directed it and everyone was super young and like on the precipice of the next thing. Um, and I was so young. Jenna Malone was in it too. Um, and it's really where I, I learned the lingo and what it was like being on set, which I mean, I could have had a lower stakes thing that I did instead of being with all these insanely talented people. Well, but It's the best way, jump, jump in at the deep end. You know, you'll learn, you learn sure from did. the best from day one. I sure did. Yeah. yeah, I loved that Fox multicam I did too, just because I love multicams and everyone was so funny. Breaking Bad was um, just an emotional rush. I love, uh, I love Breaking Bad. So good, right? And yeah. Dome was like Alex Koch, who played Junior, is like one of my besties um, still. It was like, I didn't go to college, but it was like college years because we were all stuck in this little town together and would just go do everything together so super fun um but orange i was a fan of before doing it so i like so that's like yeah um, yeah 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 so we were like waiting for the third season to drop and it just dropped when i got the call that i'd be in the fourth season so that was awesome plus i love new york so i got to spend some time in new york oh win-win um yeah donny donny darko was one of my favorites i remember i watched that um when i when i was younger um and obviously breaking bad under the dome you you were in correct me if i'm wrong i might be wrong you were in glee as well is that right i was i was i thought i was gonna get to do some singing but it didn't happen the storyline kind of fizzled out um can, can you sing too i can i'm a, wow. I'm a singer <laughs> you, you, you try and secure a project where you can use your your lungs Right. But see, now it's been so long now. Like my daughter is like, no, no, mommy, don't sing. No, no, mommy. And she um, needs to sing all the songs. So, oh, okay. If, and if, if you wait any longer, you'll be like in the embarrassing years where you'll be an embarrassing mom. Yes. I wouldn't, yes, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't let my mom sing. Re I, that just makes me want to sing even louder and like roll the windows. I'm, down. I'm, I'm sure she would be the same. Embarrass her. <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, do you have any upcoming projects that you're working on or do you want to plug or, you know, what is there to look forward to? Yeah. So I actually left WandaVision a day early. Um, okay. and they were kind enough to let me go do this project in Maui. So I spent two months in Maui. Maui. I know during pandemic and they shut down a resort for us. So I would like give any, oh my. It was incredible, but. I, I can't imagine as incredible as swimming with sea turtles and like fine dining and like COVID tested. So everyone felt super safe during a pandemic. Of course. Son, I was so tan by the end. Um, I got to work with Mike White, who was the uh, writer director who did like Nacho Libre and stuff. Um, and I love that film. Starring in it was uh, Jennifer Coolidge. Molly Shannon, Connie Britton, okay. Steve Zong, Alexandra Daddario. Oh my, oh, I'm, I have had the biggest crush on her like my whole life. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's, that is unreal. I am, um, I was, a. I read all the Percy Jackson books and that's like when I was like sort of becoming a teenager and then I watched the movie and she was in it and I was like, oh my God. And then, since then I've had the biggest crush on Alexandra Daddario. Well, my sister is a huge Percy Jackson fan. And so she shipped me her book, the first book that she got that she I read. Would have, I would have done the and same. 
I had Alex um, sign it for her. Yeah. Someone else is just living my dream out there. Oh my God. I, I would have shipped myself. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. You yeah. Know, that's... So it's, called, it's called The White Lotus. It's a limited series for HBO. It's a dive into the behind the scenes of an upscale resort. Okay. Um, is what, what genre is it? What, what's it like? Ooh, dark comedy. Dark, my favorite. The yeah. best kind. Yeah. So when, when does that come out? Do you know roughly? or? I don't know. The trailer just dropped for the um, HBO's 2021 season. So I would personally imagine it might be May, but don't quote me. Okay. I'll, I'll, right I'll check it out after this, definitely. Yeah, and it's going to be it's gonna be good. I just did some ADR and it looks it looks fantastic. Perfect. I can claim that I know someone from it. And I'm, I will also definitely claim that I'm one person away from Alexandra Daddario. Yes. Oh my um, gosh. Oh, do you want an Alex story? Yes. Alex? Okay. Please. So, so there was a COVID scare. No one had COVID. Well, no mm -hmm. one. Yeah. So I was exposed to someone who was potentially exposed to someone. So I had to quarantine in paradise for 12 days. I couldn't leave my hotel room. She drew me a picture of sea turtles because we used to swim with sea turtles every day. And now I can't. So she drew me a picture of sea turtles and a bottle of wine and was like it sucks that you're trapped in there but like pour one out for the sea turtles <laughs> um it's very very sweet um very funny yeah. that's amazing yeah that's cool um so you've recently joined tiktok and um it, i don't yeah. get it and yeah it's, it's wild what, what do you like you've had i've i, I follow you and i've I watched your videos what do you think like the overwhelming support you know is crazy it's a mad a mad active community over there yeah it is again like the marvel fans are like die hard amazing like honestly more of a loyal fan base than i think i've seen for like orange or anything else some dome stuff i think it dome was like pretty big in the uk yeah well i, I watched it here i'm I'm not I, I don't know how, I have no idea how big it was but I watched it here and I enjoyed it so it played on like main you know main channel tv here yeah it did here too but I feel like it, for some reason like the UK fans of Dome were like yeah a, a lot of American shows like don't air in the UK though so it it made its way over like the mainstream here so it must have it must have yeah oh amazing um I just I like I don't I don't understand social media I think I'm like too old for social media not at all not at all uh, so I'm trying I'm like oh let me just talk about stupid things so oh. I love answering fan questions it's like my favorite thing in the world well, here we are good perfect because <laughs> I've got I've got I've got a few from fans in a second um, and yeah. just after I've got like a couple more questions uh, here moving on from or continuing with the TikTok thing have you seen all the the sort of memes and jokes about Jimmy Woo I haven't but people keep talking about it and I can't, I don't, I don't know how to find it. The whole, it's, it's not like one thing that it came from. Basically, um, as soon as he showed up in the first, ep like uh, in the first episode, he was in episode four, I think. And he, you know, he whips out the card trick. Everyone went into like a mental breakdown and just fell in love with him. And like, he has like, there's like cults. There's people who are obsessed. They've changed their names. They're pro like everything. They are sold that jimmy Wu is their favorite person in the whole planet they're I everywhere mean, my comment sections 90 percent of them are jimmy Wu all the time i did a live the other day and someone named um randall park official which i was like i don't know if you're official um <laughs> was like blowing it up about some things i, I think it was a fan but yeah, yeah. it's it's great like he just he, he deserves it all he's a, a great great guy but yeah he like the whole Marvel fandom like went into meltdown and just decided that they chose this person and we will all love him and stand by him, you know, to death now. Amazing. And there's a possibility but of his humor is so subtle. Yeah, you know it's just I mean? yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's clever. Like he, he's just in in the sea of Marvel where everyone's either a hero or like a villain. He's just like a really nice guy. Yeah. And that's what I think that's what yeah, everyone loves him. He's just so wholesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, he's for whatever, well, not for whatever reason, for good reason, but everyone fell in love with him and he's got his possibility of getting his own show now, his own Disney Plus show. Yes! Because Dude, of fan... It. It's been pitched by a director, I can't remember exactly which one, 
of um, him and Darcy in like an X-Files type show solving cases around the that MCU. Would be amazing. It's it's been pitched and it's been teased a little bit, but nothing's confirmed, obviously. But that would be awesome. And that's all because of fan demand, basically. Wow. Yeah, it's mad. Incredible. Yeah. Oh goodness. So um I know I know uh, a couple of the other the other guys did. Did you get to keep anything from the set or did you take anything from the set? Um I <laughs> so on my last day <laughs> that laugh that laugh gives it away <laughs> on the last day I took the back of my chair which generally on shows you do but you ask and I was like I don't want them to say no so I'm gonna put it in my bag ahead of time and then I'm gonna ask and like David was like I don't I don't think this is a good I don't think this is a good idea and I was like no 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 I'll ask for you too He's like no 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 it's okay don't ask for me too because you know everything so so yeah. Hush, hush and you know quiet and so when I did ask and they said yes David was like wait where's my chair where's my chair oh yeah <laughs> no I, I would do the same yeah um and then we got some wrap gifts so I like I have the sweatshirt and the um hat and socks and um pins uh they were handing out pins and That's so cool yeah yeah I I gave the pins I have so many friends they're huge Marvel fans and so I gave most of it away um, I just wanted to keep like my chair back and my sweatshirt. <laughs> so oh, I, I saw the sweatshirts. They look great. I saw um I think so um Asif made a video about his and he showed off like all the cool stuff that he got and yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, I think I think that kind of wraps up my questions. Um, but obviously, like I said before, I'm a huge Marvel fan and I've got like a following and they're all huge Marvel fans, and like we have a, like a really cool community. So what I've done is I reached out, um, I asked people for questions and they sent questions in because I obviously, I just want to try and involve everyone. Again, this is, I'm, I feel super lucky to talk to you and I want to give as many people that possibility, that opportunity as possible. Okay, so um, yeah, I'll just run through some questions. They're all pretty easy and lighthearted questions. Um, so I've got this one here from Mr. Mr. Melamint. How has it been the best character in the show? Oh. You've got, you, you've got a big, big fan. I I loved Beverly. I think she was pretty swell. Oh, <laughs> a big a big big fan. Um, this is from uh, Josh from Discord. What was if if you had it? I've kind of already asked this. What was your favorite fan theory that you heard? Not not like something like if you're in these chat rooms, or whatever. Is there any really wild one that that you liked or would have wanted to come true? Um, there was some like things about the bunny. I was like that. Like, that was a big got, a big talking point yeah yeah that got pretty dark and i was like but it's a cute bunny but that would make sense but yeah that was the it, one that came across the, i think the main one um surrounding the bunny was that a lot of people for whatever reason thought it was going to be doctor strange oh yeah i i just the mephisto thing just kept messing me up because i'm like wait now i feel like i need to know who mephisto is oh um, yeah like I, like I'm, I'm a big fan but like even even me i was like researching stuff every week and i was like i need to know more i need to know everything so i can find and understand it all like um yeah. but the one... mine would call and they'd be like so what so it's gonna go like this and i'm like i have no idea like stop calling me i don't know was... and if I, I couldn't tell you every week there was just hundreds of new things coming out and 99.9 percent .9 of them were so wrong and so far off yeah that, that's that's the best part of being a fan though is the hype around like every week there's new speculation and all that sort of stuff you know yeah yeah um what was your uh, this is from hen solo what was your reaction to the finale like when you watched it from behind the camera point of view what was your so i'm very judgmental of myself okay <laughs> so... okay I, every i feel like everyone is everyone I judged my choking face pretty harshly and the fact that it was like the size of the TV and like we have a pretty large TV. I was like, that looks terrible. That is terrible. Um, but the finale overall was incredible. And um, Lizzie and Paul the, the, saying good night to their kids. Oh my, I've, oh, this is, I've got, um, uh, this is not, not from that speech, but yeah, the to grow old in the sweatshirt. I yeah. loved it so much. Um, I've yeah that that last scene is so long darling I watch it with my younger cousin we, we were in tears we were I, I couldn't handle it I'll, I love them so much they deserve the whole world yeah the whole uh, yeah the whole thing just tears yeah. just or tears. 
the the one line where she um she says thank you for choosing me to be your mom to, to the boys pain yeah, yeah. that is the pain he, he uh, she says wait is it her that says to him like you'll always be with me right because the... um he said you're the part of the mind stone that lives inside me uh you're my I think it's uh, you're you're my grief, you're my sadness, but most importantly, you're my love. That's what that's the line. Thank you for knowing that line. It's so good. And then um, I think the next part is the whole thing is painful. The next part it goes um. We've said we've said goodbye before, so it stands to reason we'll say hello again and they finish the sentence. Oh my god, yes. that whole thing is is horrible in a good way. It's it's, it's like it's amazingly written. Happens. It's like a tear and a laugh, a tear and a laugh. It's yeah. like it was an emotional roller coaster. The whole finale, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Right at the end, I was like, oh, like I just, yeah. I just, I was like, oh, oh. oh off a then cliff. you realize what happens at the end, you're driving off a cliff. Yeah. But in, in the best way, it was, it was, I loved it. I'm a big yeah. fan. Um, this, this Connor, uh, Connor, this question is from Connor's visual. What was the WandaVision set like compared to other sets that you've worked on? What, like any noticeable differences? Well, we had COVID protocols. <laughs> well, yeah, a pretty big one, yeah. Um, you know, I would say my trailer was the biggest and nicest trailer I've ever had on One Division. Um, no, I just, it was so chill. It was so chill. I don't know. Um, no egos, no anything. Where there should be egos, there were none. And um, yeah, I guess that's, it just felt like teamwork. Like theater growing up, it feels like teamwork. And this really, truly felt like teamwork, like well, supporting one another. Right. It, it showed in the final product, you know, it was great. It was the number one most popular show in the world at one point, which, you know, <laughs> you've worked on the number one most popular show in the world at one point. It's, it's unbelievable. Right? Yeah. Um, this question is from Jade Russell. What's your dream role? Like, outside of marvel with anything any type of tv or movie what's the dream role you'd like to play outside of marvel i would love to come back into the marvel land i'm just going to throw that out there um oh, but outside of <laughs> outside of marvel i want to do a multi-camera sitcom like that's my dream i just want to be that like that like mom on a multi-camera show um or i want to do something where i have to break down into tears every week like I don't want any middle ground. Like, don't give me the middle. Give me like hilarious or give me like death. I don't know. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. um, this is my own question just because I, 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 I want to know if I've got an answer in my head and I want to know if it's right. If you could play a different character on One Division, who would you want to play? <gasps> From what you've said, I've got an answer in my head. I want to know if I'd be, if, I, if I'm correct. Okay. Like on One Division. On One Division, yeah. Okay, so I would not do it justice, but Catherine Hahn's character. I knew it. I knew it. Just from what you said there, like being like the the flamboyant, like center, you know, multicam. She that that's yeah. her. Like, she was so perfect in the role. And the way that she played the different eras and knowing who she was, but not alluding to it too early. Yeah. The tension she lived in was perfection the, the nosy neighbor type she just killed the role she was great look i got these shutters with like the top so that i could be the nosy neighbor at my house so there you go so if you <laughs> if there's i don't know how it would work but if there's ever a season two yes it was yes. Bever it was beverly all along yes um oh you, you can sing as well you can get your own song it was it was Catherine that sang the song wasn't it I think so, yeah. It was her and it was someone else was on it as well, but I'm pretty sure it was Catherine that recorded the vocals for it, which yeah, is even I mean, more impressive. I love how it tied back into when she was like, you're not supposed to talk. Um, oh, on the yeah. End, right, how that all tied. Oh, it was so good. That, that reveal, like, I was jumping in my chair. I was, like, you know, freaking yeah. out. Um, yeah. I've got a question, a question here. Who's your favourite Marvel character? Um... <sighs> That's rough because I think Robert Downey Jr. is incredible and I love his humor and just, like I, I love I love him so much yeah um but it's I a also, very tough question 
Mark Ruffalo's gentleness as Hulk. Yep. And I also love Scarlett Johansson's um, intensity that she brings. Um, I don't know. There's, there, there, there's a case for all of them. Yeah. But hands down, I'm going to say the Scarlet Witch is my favorite. Um, I feel like you're in a big, a big majority with that at the moment. Everyone's in love with, El- with Elizabeth. Uh, they should be. They should yeah, be. I am. I am. Um, Wait, I'm going to ask you a question. Go for it. Lizzie or Alex? Lizzie. At the, <gasps> at, at the moment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text Alex right now and be like, oh. I'm <laughs> just can, kidding. <laughs> can, can you also text Elizabeth right now and be like, oh. <laughs> do, do it both ways. I don't mind. Both ways. Okay. As long as I do. Okay. If, fair, fair. I would have said the other, the, the, I would have said Alex up until the point of the new costume. The new costume is too good. <laughs> It's too so good. good. So it's good. It's the, the wavy hair, the crown is, is too cool. The I can't, crown, yeah. That, that, that's, that's what tips the skill. They're, they're both great, but that tips the skill. Can we talk about the wardrobe department on Marvel? Oh, my. Uh, can you tell me if this is true? Because I heard this um, on, on Reddit online. I, I don't know if it's true at all. Every item of clothing is custom made for the actor. Well, I know that my 60s costume was custom made for me because I, I i put this post out asking like oh where did this character get this or like can anyone find something online that's similar to this t-shirt um from one of the things and someone replied saying um i've heard that every item of clothing uh, like is like size and style customized to the character and i've, I've never known if that's true i don't i'm not don't a hundred percent yeah, yeah, right. But I think some of my wardrobe for like present day and like the 2000s and stuff was um, from like a store. Yeah. See, I, I thought that would be the case because like surely not everything had to be. I understand the stuff that you can't really just buy in a store like like the, the 50s and 60s. And, or and like the, the, visions. Yeah, the full on costumes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I really I've actually I've been meaning to ask that to someone who could answer it for me, but. Um, I, I won't quote you on it, but I, I, I have closure with this question that I've had for I a while. I do know that my, my 60s dress was made for me. Did you get to keep You didn't get to keep it, no? Ugh, it wouldn't fit in my backpack. I tried, but no, I'm just kidding. I did not try, Marvel. I did not try. Um, you want to yeah. keep keep the, the chance of coming back in the future. Exactly. I want them to keep that so that I can come back and wear it again. Okay. Uh, this question is from Taco Sam. Who's the biggest inspiration in your career, either growing up or present, or like now, who's the biggest inspiration for you or both? Um, I think I learned a lot from Lizzie watching her work. Like her work ethic is, is inspirational. I think growing up, I was obsessed with Judy Garland, triple talent. My mom, um, my mom is a huge fan of Judy Garland. Huge. I have an entire box filled with like memorabilia, like stalker, kind of huge obsession with her um and julie andrews same kind of thing just the old school oh, that's I'm, I'm not just saying my, that's my mom like her two of her favorite julie andrews is her favorite of all time i'm, I'm pretty sure like the I'm, I'm pretty sure that's her favorite actress of all time she told me that earlier today i was asking She's her who incredible. um I, I asked her the question i was it was for some video i was making and it was um to do with like the most iconic or most loved female actresses of all time and her first answer was um was that the same same as yours? Was the two of them were mentioned, but I think uh, Julie Andrews is like one of her favorites. Yeah, so, yeah. You got good taste. I mean, yeah, she. I, that's they're just iconic. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's okay. That's, <laughs> that's a good answer. It's a good answer. Um, I've been saying the whole whole way throughout One Division that um, that Elizabeth Olsen deserves like every award she can possibly get is. She really like deserved everything. Every week was something so different, and she nailed it. It was great. Is she nominated? Did the Emmy noms come out yet? No. I I'm I'm not like up to date on that stuff. I I don't know, but I did make it public a lot of times. If that she's not nominated. There's issues. Yeah, rigged. Yeah, hundred. Um, yeah. who? So this question is from Oshin Cunningham. What's your favorite Marvel moment that you've seen so far? Oh no. 
It's a hard. These are hard questions. I couldn't answer it's these questions. Really There's too many. I mean, I I think what we quoted earlier has got to be the thing that like broke the, my heart most. The speech. That's probably my favorite yeah. part of WandaVision. That is the best part. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Yeah. This question is from uh, Luca from Discord. Um, so this, not including WandaVision, that you've seen so far, what's been your favorite Marvel movie? So not I haven't to- watched enough. Um, I just, I love the Iron Mans. It's, it's, really- there's nothing wrong with that answer at all. Like, these, really they're did. one of the best. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was working on Under the Dome, they had shot part of Iron Man 2, I think, in North Carolina which is where I was. So I was working with the same kind of crew that, that worked on Iron Man too. Oh, that's cool. So we actually all went to go see it um, together. So that might be why I was, I'm more obsessed with Iron Man is because I got to hear some stories about shooting it as well. And how that's pretty cool. awesome Robert Downey Jr. is oh, to everyone. He looks like, yeah. So may, that maybe, might be maybe the only person cooler than Paul, maybe. Maybe. I'm, I think Paul might still at, be. At the moment. Probably like up until One Division, Robert Downey Jr.'s be like he's just so cool. Fair. From, yeah. Because I've been so into One Division, the behind the scenes, Paul Bettany is he's, he's maybe taking over the, the yeah. person that created them technically in in the MCU. Um. Yeah. So, so you went to see Iron Man two in the cinema, not knowing that one day you'd be a part of that whole universe. Uh, That's wild. Oh, right. So crazy. And you, you, you would be so- working with the voice in the suit. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, Paul. Yeah, that's where Paul Paul Bettany is the only Marvel actor ever to act in three different decades. Full circle. That's full circle. And there's um, so I worked with this one girl who played um the daughter in uh Dome, and her little brother is now doing Mrs. Marvel. Miss Marvel. Yeah, yeah, Miss Marvel. Yeah, so he's now working on that. So um, cool. His mom like emailed me and is like, "Hey, we're working together again, but not really." Yeah, so. it's just a massive interconnect, and they're, they're taking over. <laughs> Disney and Marvel are taking over. I'm okay with it. Oh, me too. I'm I'm fully okay with it. There's a project coming out every single uh, week this whole year. This yeah. Coming out. This that's blows my mind. Um, I got a question here. What's one actor you'd love to work with? <sighs> I mean, this year I got to work with Lizzie, Jennifer, and Molly, and that was like, or not this year, last year, and I had no idea that I wanted to work with them so badly until I did, so I can't even imagine who I would say. Who would I say? Um, Oh, I adore Melissa McCarthy, and I feel like I get her, and I feel like we could be besties, so I feel like I'd want to work with her. She's great. I I, yeah. I I I love Melissa McCarthy. She's a great a- a- actress. Yeah, I great love actor. her. Yeah. Um, question from uh from Belly Coast here, and I, from what you've seen again, who's your favorite villain in Marvel? That's rough. Um, Loki. Loki Loki is like definitely one of the best. Um, I just Tom Hiddleston also is like one of the a, best. There's like an internal burn and a pain that his anger comes from that is just. I can like, I can tell you as well without spoiling anything that if you keep watching the Marvel movies, you'll love him even more. He he gets better and better and better the whole way throughout all. Really? Yeah. Okay. He's he's like one of the best characters. Well, and he's got his series coming out soon, right? Uh, me, me, I cannot wait. I'm, I'm a huge like Tom Hiddleston fan. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, question here, um, dark from Dark Sky. Are you going to watch the Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Yeah. So you're, you're, I wish, you're. I it's 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 ready. It's locked and ready to go. I'm not going to stay up till midnight and watch it though. I'm not that hardcore. Probably a Saturday night situation. But I wish I could watch it with my Marvel friends so that they could oh, explain yeah. me more. You know what I mean? But I'll just have to tune into your channel and you can explain it all. To I, me. I, that, that's what I'm here for. That, that's that's what everyone's <laughs> here for. Um, okay, I've got a couple of rapid fire questions. I know I'm taking up a lot of time. We're almost out of time. So I've got a couple quick questions to end it. Okay. okay. Um, team Iron Man or Team Captain America? Iron Man. Um, your favorite Spider Man actor? Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland. 
Toby Maguire. I think I have to go old school. Like, uh, yeah. Toby, yeah. Toby's my favorite. He's my favorite. Um, <laughs> who is the strongest Marvel character, in your opinion? Oh, see, that's okay. Rapid fire. You said Hulk, like physically, but I feel like okay. the, and the Witch is the most powerful now. That, that was my next question. The strongest and and most powerful. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's where it lies. Yeah. Uh, one one final question. So it's, it's a hard one. Wanda or Vision? David <sighs> David couldn't answer this. But I'm going to make you answer. I told him it was okay to not answer, but. Paul, you are so incredibly kind and amazing, but I vote you off this island. <laughs> that was rough. That was hard. That was graceful. Um, if, if Paul's watching, um, you're, I, I prefer you, so please talk to me. We, we, I want to talk to Paul. Um, if Lizzie's watching. I, if Lizzie's watching, I change my answer and... <laughs> I want to talk to Lizzie. Um, if anyone else is watching, you're also my favorite. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much all we've got time for. Thank you so much for talking to me. This has been great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just once again, thank you so much for 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 being here and, and talking to me. I really appreciate it. I'll let you go now. Um, but this was great. We need to do it again sometime. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'm just stopping again. I'm just stopping in again at the end to say a huge, huge thank you to every single person that supports me, follows me, subscribes to me, anything like that. Every single part of it helps me so much and is giving me the opportunity to talk to people like this, which is so crazy for me as a fan. If you want to be involved in the next interview I do, then join my Discord. The link is in the description. You can submit questions there. And we have a community of over 300 people who all love to talk about Marvel every single day. Apart from that though, we're going to be hyped for the Falcon of the Winter Soldier. It comes out in three or four days depending on when I upload this. I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm so excited for that. I'm going to be doing reaction videos, easter egg breakdowns, all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be great fun. But until then, I'll see you all next time. Thank you.